Coming up in the news, residents weighing in on the health minister's resignation. The island of Bimini of concern as COVID cases rise. And the Ministry of Education continuing its launch assistance program. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, all. I'm Megan Shepard. Thank you so much for tuning in. Topping news, a new health minister is now in place to help chart the course through this ongoing COVID-19 crisis. The Cabinet Office announcing last evening that Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, will temporarily assume responsibility for the portfolio of health effective immediately. This follows the resignation of Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sands, which took effect on Tuesday, May 5th. Residents of Grand Bahama are giving their take on these changes. Italia Hall has that story. The resignation of Dr. Dwayne Sands from Cabinet came after he was heavily criticized for allowing several Americans but permanent residents of the Bahamas into the country, along with a donation of 2,500 COVID-19 test swaps, which the Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, says was a breach of protocol. The Prime Minister accepted Dr. Sands' resignation. But the news came as a shock to some on Grand Bahama. Some say they believe Dr. Sands was an effective Minister of Health, while others say it was the right thing for him to do. He did the honorable thing in keeping with the Prime Minister's mandate that everybody should stay above board. I think he did the honorable thing to resign. Now, a lot of people just saying, oh man, he, we needed him at this time. He hasn't stepped back from his um, civic duties. He's still performing his civic duty, he's still a doctor, and that comes first and foremost in his life. But I think um, having made a snap decision, and it turned out to be a decision that was going against the established policies, he did the right thing by resigning. For him to step up to the plate and hand in his resignation was the right thing to do. Knowing what <clears throat> was previously uh, put out there mandate by the government, that no persons should be able to enter the Bahamas. And we understand what he was trying to do, but we know at the end of the day, no one is supposed to enter the Bahamas. It should, he should be disciplined. However, at a strategic time like this, I think um, it should, there should be some renegotiation so that he can come forward and after the season, then move forward in reprimand. But at this moment, it is too strategic. We're in a crisis. The people have learned, and he's been so instrumental in his explanation to what is happening and very clear. He must have had some reason why he resigned. You know, it may be deeper than we really think it is, but we will never know. You know, that's my take on it. Resident Joseph Robinson says he believes that now was just not the time for the former minister to resign. He shouldn't have resigned. Although he breached the whatever it is, he shouldn't resign. He was doing a great job and that's for the good of the country. And I, I said to myself, the prime minister should not accept it. Now, it was announced on Tuesday, May 5th, that the Prime Minister will temporarily assume responsibility for the Ministry of Health. Now, here's what residents on Grand Bahama had to say about that decision. Personally, him being the leader of the nation, and we know that he's a doctor by profession, he would have the skills to do so. However, being the leader of the nation, I think his attention should be on that as opposed to taking on something else. Prime Minister is the Prime Minister. He has the power to make whatever decision he sees fit. And his decision is based on the law. And um, whatever the Prime Minister's decision is, it's final and I respect it. But once again, it doesn't matter to me who is the Minister of Health. What matters to me is that the needs of Grand Bahama is met and we can feel more safe and secure that if anything happens to us, we have adequate facilities to accommodate us. Best thing to do at this time, because it's probably um, for him to just find another person to put in there. You know, I I think he should do it as being a doctor and the prime minister. I and he didn't really had a position like that. 
a ministerial position. I think this is the best thing at this time. When coming into office in 2017, the Prime Minister decided that he would not take on the responsibility of any government ministry in order to effectively carry out his duties as Prime Minister. While this resident says he is the right person for the post of Health Minister at this time. He's a doctor, so I think so. I mean, it'll be a lot of, um, that's a, that'll be a strain on him. But I think so because he is a doctor, so he should know all the medical terms and all everything that goes along with being a doctor. Now, this position is not new for the Prime Minister, as he held the post of Minister of Health back in 2007 during the Ingram administration. It's Halia Hall, ZNS Network News. Now, five new cases of COVID-19 reported by health officials, with three of the five coming out of Bimini. The island making quite a name for itself, as it remains a hot spot for the potentially deadly COVID-19 disease after pulling in another three of those five new cases. Health officials confirming that case number 85 is a 60-year-old New Providence woman. Case number 86, 87, and 88 are all out of Bimini, the patients a 25-year-old man, a 36-year-old man, and a 15-year-old girl. They're all isolating at home. And also making the list as the 89th case is a 50-year-old Grand Bahama woman. Meantime, the recovered cases have increased by 1 to 26. As expected, there's also been an upswing in tests at 1,485. And Bimini now has a total of 11 cases and is considered an area of concern. Residents are being encouraged to pay attention to safety protocols. You may recall that the first COVID-19 death came from Bimini. Businesswoman Kim Johnson Roll on March 30th. Administrator Cleola Pinder telling ZNS News earlier today that they are monitoring the situation on that northern island. We kind of expected I guess one or two more additional because, you know, such a close-knit family here in Bimini. And so we're not overly, overly concerned because it's from the same grouping. So hopefully that will be the end of it and we can get back to some norm form of normalcy here in Bimini. We just need to stop the spread. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we're doing that um, for the most part by practicing the social distancing and, you know, wearing our masks. But you still have one or two persons that's not adhering. And I guess that's the experience of, of all of the islands, at least all of my colleagues who I spoke to. Uh, we still don't have banking services at this time, which is unfortunate. And hopefully soon we should be able to correct that. I'm concerned for Bimini because we are basically our economy is um, tourism. That's our, our number one industry here, and, 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 and indeed the Bahamas, but more so here in Bimini. At least 70% of the persons work in the hospitality industry, and so we really need to get our economy going here in Bimini. Um, persons are beginning to feel the pinch. I know Resort World would love to reopen, and I guess um, they were looking at hopefully reopening June 1, if that's possible. So if we could just continue to adhere to the instructions. I guess wearing masks is going to become a way of life. And so, you know, wear a mask and practice the social distancing and practice good, good um, hygiene. Um, we should be okay, but wearing masks is probably going to become a, a, a way of life. Grand Bahama also recording an additional case of COVID-19, a 50-year-old female, the latest victim. This case coming after a month-long period of calm with no cases being reported. As a result, residents are being cautioned to remain vigilant. Jamila Mizik reports. On Tuesday, confirming an additional case of COVID-19 in Grand Bahama, bringing the number of confirmed cases on the island to eight, the first case in weeks. Minister of State for Grand Bahama, Senator the Honorable Kwesi Thompson says, the news is disappointing, but it is sending a clear message to Grand Bahama that we cannot let our guard down with respect to the fight against the COVID-19 virus. It is uh, clear that uh, the disease is still in Grand Bahama and that we still must keep uh, all of the precautions that we were doing and uh, we must continue those precautions. We must ensure that uh, the, everyone wears 
a mask, it is mandated, so we want to continue to impress upon people to wear out their mask, to continue to keep the social distancing in uh, Grand Bahama. The minister says additional testing is being done in Grand Bahama, as well as contact tracing in respect to this latest case. In the meantime, he's urging businesses who have been allowed to operate in Phase 1B in the Economic Recovery Plan to continue to adhere to the protocols set in place. This uh, Sunday, the Prime Minister uh, moved Grand Bahama and uh, uh, Nassau into the 1B phase which allows persons to do their online uh, and telephone orders and curbside and delivery pickup. We are urging businesses to stay within those guidelines and not to breach the protocols. Only businesses that can operate by online and telephone using curbside and delivery services are allowed to operate. He's also encouraging those Grand Bahama residents abroad who wish to return home to contact the Consul General in Miami. Work is presently being done with respect to the return of uh, residents to uh, New Providence and also to Grand Bahama. And so we are saying to persons who uh, want to return home and they are from Grand Bahama to ensure that they make contact with the Council General's office in Miami. There is a process that they are, they are going through through the Council General and they are organizing the return of those residents to Grand Bahama, which we expect to be very, very shortly within the next coming days. Jimmy Lamizic, Saturday Network News. Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, issuing amendment to the Emergency Powers COVID-19 Special Provisions No. 3 order today. Vehicle inspection for license renewal that expired during the state of emergency has been suspended from March 17th for the duration of the state of the public emergency and extending 60 days thereafter. The order also states that vehicles must be owned by the individual, roadworthy, and the inspection fee must be paid at the time of the license renewal. The new amendment also provides specific details to government's new rental assistance program. We'll have more in a later newscast. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Apostle Mike Francis from the Just Should Live by Faith Ministries. Today, I come with a word of encouragement for you. I know that it ain't easy in this time. This is a season where it looks like everything is going against you. But I come with a word from the Lord. And you're going to find me in Deuteronomy chapter number 29. Glory to God. And verse number 3. Here we go. The Bible says Moses called the nation of Israel together and told them, When you were in Egypt, you saw the Lord perform great miracles that caused trouble for the king he and his officials and everyone else in the country. He has even told you for 40 years, I have led you through the desert, but your clothes, your sandals didn't wear out and I gave you special food. I did these things so you would realize that I am your God. If it's ever a time we've got to come to the realization that God is our God and in him being our God, he will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. He will take care of you and I, he's concerned for us. The, me the message of hope that I want to give you today that, hey, we're going to come out of this and God is going to do it himself. I want to encourage you. It may seem like everything is going wrong for you. Your marriage is going crazy. Your children gone crazy. Ain't no job, ain't much money coming in. But God says, I, even if I have to cause a rock to spew out water for you, I will take good care of you. Be encouraged, my beloved. I love you. Be strong in the Lord. God bless you. And coming up in the news, the government's lunch assistance program continues.